your local statement, raise your hand, keep them up, and I will get to you with a mic. How's everybody today? Good. good. Well, we had a good practice today. Um, wasn't quite so hot out there today, and we didn't get chased back and forth inside. We set the record for going in and out yesterday. Um, I don't think we've ever moved in and out as much as we did yesterday, which I'm sure you know the weatherman got chewed out for that, whoever that is, uh, around here. But um, we didn't have that issue today, and it went really well. Um, so again, as I said this morning, uh, the focus is on improvement, uh, especially with younger players. Uh, we need to have more players play. Uh, we've got opportunities created by injuries on special teams, opportunities created at various positions on defense. Um, we got to develop more depth on our team. So uh, that's been the real focus for us. Um, you know, right now there's nothing really new on, on injuries. Um, you know, we're sort of proud to be um, involved with this first and gold awareness game, which is all about curing kids' cancer, uh, which we certainly are happy to be a part of uh, institutionally and as a program. Um, they've raised over $11 million since 2005 for pediatric cancer, and that's something that um, I think is very, very important for our young people. We're excited to be back at home and playing at Brian Daddy Stadium. It seems like it's been a long time. I can't hardly remember the last game we played here, so um, it'll be great, and we're looking forward to it. And I'm hopeful that we have a, a great crowd that really shows the appreciation for our team and their efforts and uh, how hard they played in the last game and support them, you know, in this particular game. Okay, we'll start with you on the right with Charlie. We saw several of your freshman wide receivers utilizing Saturday. Just what do you think of their performance and really the receiving core as a whole? All right. Well, you know, I think we got to get more guys involved in the passing game. I think guys have capabilities, and the only way they're going to develop confidence is they have a few more opportunities, which we've talked before about uh, all the technical aspects of the passing game, whether it's protection, whether it's uh, presence in the pocket, whether it's route running, uh, timing. All these things need to improve, but I think. Uh, those guys have a tremendous amount of potential. I think if we're going to have an explosive offense, uh, we're going to have to have other explosive receivers develop. And I certainly like the progress that those guys have made and the maturity that they've shown. Uh, but I also think they're capable of being a little more consistent. But I think it would help them a lot if they got a few balls and got some confidence in what they're doing as well. Back over here on the left with Rainer. Um, with the uh, injuries at linebacker, how much could that possibly affect your ability to play in base, or, or will it affect your ability to play base? Well, we'll still play base. You know, we, we've got other guys that we're working at those positions. I think we won't have a choice but to play base in some of the games that we have down the road. So we have to use this time to develop the players that we have. Um, you know, I think Anthony Jennings and uh, Michonne will both be out for this game, probably for sure. Uh, hopefully we'll get them back soon after, but that's going to be a day-to-day -day decision probably. I don't think either guy can practice tomorrow. Typically when a guy can't practice on Thursday that hasn't practiced all week, I think it's pretty tough to play him in the game. So um, that, that's probably going to be the scenario with those guys. But um, we've got some other guys that are getting some valuable experience, and um, I think it's going to help in the long run in terms of the depth and the experience that these guys gain, but I do think we, we still have confidence that we can play base defense. Come back over here, Chandler. We saw Coach Loxley return to the staff. Is he going to be able to coach on Saturday, and how has he been received since he got back? Well, we're doing everything we can to support him and his family, and um, I think the funeral arrangements are going to be after the game. Uh, so I think the plan is for him to leave right after the game, and uh, uh, I think service will be on Monday. I don't know all the details, but um, you know, I told him he certainly wasn't expected to be here. Uh, that he could be and spend as much time as he needed with his family. And um, he, he said, you know, it's helpful for me, for me to be here. It kind of gets my mind off of things. And uh, so we're happy to have him and be around us and support him every way we can. Back in the middle with Michael. I want to ask how guys like Deshaun Hand, O'Brien Ray, how they might be able to help out at, at outside linebacker. Well, Deshaun Hand doesn't play outside linebacker. Um, 
you know, LeBron Ray is a guy that's never played it. Um, he is a guy that we're looking at at that position. We'll see how he develops. Uh, there's certain ways that we can play our defense where we don't only need to play one outside linebacker. So, um, you know, if we need to do that, we, we certainly can do that. We've done it before in the past. Um, and when you're in the NFL, you got 53 guys on your team, right? And when this happens, you, you have to figure out how do I adapt, not only personnel-wise, but systematically and scheme-wise. Because the only way you can get guys to play there, you don't have 85 guys on scholarship. Um, you have to go get somebody off the street who really doesn't know anything about your system or your scheme. So you have to adjust and adapt the scheme so that you know players can play. And um, we, 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 we want to get the best players on the field that we can. We're confident that these guys can do a good job for us. And we're going to continue their development. Okay, we'll come back over here to Mark. Just, just wondering what you thought about uh, how Brian Day will manage the game from an offensive standpoint and, and everything like that. Well, I, I think Brian did a good job in the game. I don't, I don't think we did a real good job of executing. Uh, I talked about, you know, the money that we left on the table, however you want to say it, in terms of some plays that we had that we didn't make, whether it was a breakdown in protection, uh, a misread, um, so a mis-execution. Um, you know, if all 11 guys don't do their job, the play usually doesn't work very well, especially if it's a pass. So everybody's got to protect the right guy. Everybody's got to run the right route. Quarterback's got to deliver the ball to the right guy. All right, so there's a lot more things that can go wrong when you throw the ball. And we had some big plays in the passing game that we did not make because everybody didn't do what they were supposed to do. And people, you know, usually give the quarterback more credit than he deserves when he does well, and they also criticize him more when he doesn't, or things don't go well, but sometimes it's not all on him. And uh, we need to do a better job overall executing, you know, some of those plays so that we can make more explosive plays on offense. Um, you know, when you're a play caller, a signal caller, um, things work when you execute. And I, I, I thought that we learned something about our team. There's things that we can do differently and better. Um, and we'll all grow and learn from it and do better this week. Got a couple more. Alex in there. Just wanted to ask you, um, there's a new proposal out there, you know, floating around about tr the transfer policy and potentially taking away uh, contact restrictions and, and I think even that they get from sitting out. What are your thoughts on that new proposal? Well, you know, I haven't read all the proposal. I just got something yesterday, you know, about it. But um, I, I don't know all the legalities of it. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think that things should be a one-way street. I don't think they should be a one-way street for the institution or the program, uh, that a player doesn't have the opportunity to explore other options if that's in his best interest. Uh, but I also think that uh, the institution shouldn't be obligated to a guy when the guy isn't obligated to them to some degree. All right, so we've always had a rule where everybody has the opportunity to transfer but they have to sit out of here, all right? So that sort of is their obligation to the institution. Uh, we've also made a graduate policy, which was supposed to be for academic reasons, uh, that a guy could go to another school after he graduates when they didn't have the graduate program, but that obviously is not why guys transfer, graduate transfers. I mean, we had graduate transfers here that we have the same degree program here that they had where they went, all right? So it wasn't for academic reasons. Um, do I think that other schools should be able to contact players on, uh, I, I've never talked to a player on another team uh, all the time I've been a coach. And I, I don't think that any program should. I th think it should be sort of a rule of civility that we all have professionally, that we don't tamper with other people's players. I mean, they have rules for that in the NFL. I think we should have rules for that in college football. All right, so I think there has to be some kind of balance in terms of players still being able to have opportunities to do other things, but there also has to be a balance in the obligation that both parties have to each other um, so that how, how, how can you sort of plan 
a roster or you're recruiting or your team if everybody's a free agent at the end of every season and every player that doesn't have things going the way he wants them to go all of a sudden says well I'll just go over here and play over here so look I want to do everything I can we want to do everything we can to help the players be successful in every way but making commitments to things understanding the developmental process that goes into getting an education continuing to develop as a person who can have success in life and to develop as a football player at this level is something that takes a little bit more patience and a little bit more time sometimes than people realize and we try to help them the best we can to develop in all those areas so i i would i don't know the proposals but I would, I would be one for some kind of balance and how it would affect both parties. Last question in the middle with Eric, what can I say today? Coach, with your signing bonus this year, you'll be making more than $11 million. In your personal opinion, are you worth it? Uh, probably not, but <laughs> I don't really do this for money, never really have. You know, I started out in this profession making eight thousand dollars a year and that was after being a graduate assistant for two years making nothing uh, going to graduate school and you know working loading trucks at night my wife worked in a registrar's office and um you know we were we were happy when my dad brought us a case of peas i uh, so we could have a side dish uh, when we were eating so uh, we worked hard through the years uh, i don't think it's up to me to determine what the value is or what the market is for you know coaches or what value I've created here for this institution in this place um, and I think those people made those decisions we haven't asked for anything we've been treated extremely well here uh, we certainly appreciate it I appreciate our administration uh, I appreciate our um, athletic administration for the way they've supported the program and helped us be successful uh, and I support and I've been very thankful for what they've done for my family so um, but I'm not the one that determines you know what you just ask okay thank you coach all right thank you